Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B. New. I'm coming at you on this Wednesday. And first and foremost, as always, want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening. Now, with all that being said, we know that the Los Angeles Lakers are going to be in action tonight, taking on none other than the Memphis Grizzlies. I will get into that uh, in the latter portions of today's show. But first, I wanted to bring you a couple of breaking news. Of course, for those of you who have not heard, uh, one of these is more breaking news than the other. But first is the most breaking of news is Giannis will be doubtful for tonight's matchup against Miami Heat. You know, they have to put the status of their players, whether they're doubtful, questionable, probable, uh, in order for the odds maker to make the correct odds. Uh, it's just the nature of the business, and that's been a part of it long before there was a fan duel or any other uh, sports betting online apps that we have now. Uh, you know, that's just been a part of sports for a mighty long time. And of course, they had to list him uh, as doubtful. And if you are listed as doubtful, I have personally never seen a player be listed as doubtful and end up playing. Now, I have seen players be upgraded last minute from doubtful to questionable and still play, but usually maybe questionable to probable and end up playing. But as a as a player listed for doubtful, uh, I think they would be getting a letter from the league to list him as doubtful, and then he were to play tonight. Uh, I just don't see that happening. So, you know, the Bucks are a capable team of winning without Giannis, as we all know. Uh, of course, they had Drew Holiday, great player, who I think maybe could have been the defensive player of the year over Jared Jackson Jr., and we'll talk about that in just a moment as far as Anthony Davis not getting one single vote uh, to be defensive player of the year. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I had to bring you with that breaking news regarding Giannis uh, and their quest for a championship uh, is not looking too good, especially if they go down 2-0 to the Heat. Of course, the Heat did lose Tyler Hero with a broken hand in game one, so we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, but other breaking news is that of Draymond Green, being suspended. I said on yesterday's show that I leaned towards him being suspended. If you didn't get a chance to see yesterday's show and what I talked about and what we discussed as far as how I felt about the situation, uh, you can go back and take a look at yesterday's show. I really don't have the time or necessary minutes dedicated to this video to talk about how I feel about it. But I will say I did say that I leaned towards him receiving the suspension only because he not only, you know, just stepped on him, he put his full force as he took off from him, which was unnecessary. Now, I did say that, uh, you know, it was unnecessary for Sabonis to grab Draymond's leg and one thing led to another, but it still doesn't excuse the fact of Draymond's actions and, of course, how he acted afterwards once uh, it happened, just like the same thing in Memphis, going out, egging on the crowd, egging on the crowd. We know from the melee in the palace and everything else what could happen. And out here in California, they want you. They will bomb on you, like Tupac said. So the thing about it is you have to be careful with things of that nature because, you know, if you're inciting a crowd uh, to do things, who knows? You saw fans chirping back and forth with Draymond. You had a commissioner sitting right over there in the third row, and I'm sure he wasn't pleased as part of that uh, selling with his product and who knows? A lot of people are saying that this could be the end for Draymond Green, uh, of course, just because, you know, their run is over. And speaking of runs being over, I was thinking about some things and, you know, it made me think how many defending champions have lost in the first round. So I don't know how many of you have put in the comments how many you think have lost in the first round. And I know a lot of you guys who participate in this show or, you know, maybe not been around for a whole long time, or, you know, within that demographic of being probably under 30 years old for a lot of you. But let me tell y'all this, uh, a, a lot of champions have failed victim in the first round. And most recently, it was that of the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, the 2021, the 2021 champion Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron and AD, uh, because we all know in that first round that Anthony Davis was injured and ultimately the Lakers lost the lead that they had on the Phoenix Suns. And ultimately, uh, LeBron James, I think was eliminated in the first round for the first time in his career. So that is the one of the most recently, but, uh, 
the Warriors, you know, they have never trailed any playoff series under Steve Kerr 2-0. That is amazing to think that the Warriors have never trailed a playoff series down 2-0 under Steve Kerr. That is crazy to think about. The last time that the Golden State Warriors actually um, trailed a series 2-0 was back in 2007 when they was under Don Nelson. And I think they had B. Diddy and Steven Jackson stack five and all of them. So not sure, uh, you know, who can't remember who was actually on that team. But that just goes to show you that was a very long time time ago uh, that the Warriors were down like that. And that goes to show how great of a coach Steve Kerr has been able to assemble all that talent. But also another thing I forgot to mention, I failed to mention that uh, the main reason why Draymond probably got suspended is, I don't know if you guys seen it, but this is exclusive information, what I'm about to show you. So take a very close look at this right here. I actually have the x-ray from Sabonis's, uh from where, you know, Draymond Green stepped on Sabonis sternum. So look at this x-ray. Now check that out. <laughs> now, that's pretty bad. You understand me? So that's why he got suspended. But now nah, yeah, I just had to do that. I thought that was kind of funny. So I thought that I'd share that with y'all. But making it back back on a serious note, uh, back to the teams that I was saying have lost in the first round uh, after being the champion, it was the 2021 Lakers, the one that I just spoke about with LeBron James. But before that, it was the 2012 Mavericks. Uh, of course, that we know who upset LeBron James and the Miami Heat uh, in 2011, came back the next year. And of course, whatever reason, blew up that whole team, had six free agents, uh, only retained one of them. And they kind of limped into that playoff series. And it was against a young up-and-coming OKC Thunder, who we know were playing tremendous even the year before, giving the Lakers all they can handle, uh, you know, ultimately. But at the end of the day, uh, they were swept. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks 2012 uh, Mavericks were swept by Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, OKC and company, James Harden and company. So that was one of the more recent. Uh, another one that recently comes to mind. And it's not many, only like seven or eight teams who have won the championship, end up losing in the first round the next year. So it's not always, you know, it could be because of injury, just a lot of different factors. As we just said with the Lakers, Anthony Davis was injured, you know, uh, most notably uh, 2015 Spurs. Nobody was injured in that series. It was just a lot of depth going on, and they happened to pull the card of the Los Angeles Clippers. And we all know at that time how formidable Chris Paul, De uh, DeAndre uh, Jordan, and, of course, Blake Griffin were at that time. They used to have a lot of battles with Memphis back in the day. I went to some of those playoff games, which were phenomenal. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, that particular Spurs team lost in a seven-game series. And I don't know if you all remember. If you get a chance, go back and look at that series. I'm sure it's available on YouTube. And you can see Chris Paul hitting the game winning shot with one second on the, on the clock for a pretty clutch play as the Clippers beat the defending champion Spurs, but ultimately went on to lose to, I believe, the James Harden Houston Rockets, who eventually lost 4-1 to the Golden State Warriors, who eventually won the championship that year. Of course, we know Kyrie Irving and um, Kevin Love were hurt in that series, ultimately giving the Warriors their first championship under Steve Kerr. But if you want to go way back into the archives, I went back to 1984 where you had the defending champion Philadelphia 76ers, who of course brought over Moses Malone the year prior to give Dr. J really his first NBA ring. We know he has some ABA rings, but his first NBA ring. And of course they fell victim the following year to Daryl Dawkins in the New York, uh, not New York, forgive me, the New Jersey Nets, uh, because that was just a young up and coming team. I think they had finished the season on a 19 to five run, winning 19 of their last 24 games, which was amazing. And of course they were just young gunners and they was ready and they kind of ran the 76ers out the building who, you know, Moses Malone had dealt with some injuries that year. They had kind of fell off in the standings when he was out. Of course, Dr. J was getting old. He would retire, what, two years later, if I'm not mistaken. And of course they were no match eventually for that young up and coming New Jersey team. And there's no way they probably would have beat Boston that year anyway, of course, because we know Larry Bird was really coming into his prime and, of course, had a great team stacked behind him. But 
Also, you got to go back and look at the 1981 Los Angeles Lakers. As we all know, uh, Magic Johnson came in as a rookie uh, for the injured Kareem in Game 7 to win that first championship for himself. Uh, but the following year, they actually fell to Moses Malone and Calvin Murphy and company of the Houston uh, Rockets in the first round. So uh, other than that, the only other two teams uh, that I can recall or that I researched and found that were uh, lost in the first round the following year was the 2000 Spurs after they had won 99 uh, at a shortened lockout season uh, with David Robinson uh, getting his last championship with Tim Duncan. And of course, the following year, Duncan was injured and they ultimately fell in the first round. And then of course, uh, more notably, if you remember the 2007 Miami Heat team that was swept by the Bulls, you know, it was an agent shack. They was trying to defend their championship, but ultimately uh, they just could not contend the following year. Uh, and that goes to show you a lot of people want to say, oh, D-Wade showed LeBron how to win rings or whatnot. But at the end of the day, uh, it was actually when Dwayne Wade conceded to LeBron James and let him know, hey, I need you to be the leader and primary playmaker of this team so we can go out and win some championships. We could talk about uh, the 2011 finals another day. I look forward to, like I said, in the offseason, a lot of GOAT debates and things of that nature. So I really welcome all comers as we do that. But uh, moving right along, I said I was going to touch on uh, Jerry Jackson Jr. winning the Defensive Player of the Year. We kind of touched on that yesterday, but at the time, I was unaware that Anthony Davis didn't receive any votes. And I think that's very disrespectful uh, that Anthony Davis didn't receive not one vote. And I hope he takes that to heart as he goes out and plays great tonight uh, and brings home a victory to put the Lakers up 2-0. But, you know, for him not to have any votes at all. I know a lot of people are going to say he was injured throughout, but at the end of the day, he played, what, 54, 55 games. I know it's not a lot of games, but it was enough to help his team get in the position that they are in now. And when he is on defense, he is probably, to me, the best defender of the rim and the paint uh, in the game today. So I think that is phenomenal uh, how he plays and how he played to end the season. But for him not to get any votes, I think, is a little bit disrespectful and if you think about it uh trip and uh, just in case you don't know trip a lot of people call jerry jackson jr trip because you know the triple j but of course as you know trip uh actually deserved it i think he you know played pretty well enough to deserve it uh could have went down to anybody like i said i think drew holiday could have been somebody who who could have been a lot more deserving as well but at the end of the day you know maybe this will motivate anthony davis to play better tonight uh, but also jaron jackson jr if you really think about it he only played what 62 games so i don't think going forward as part of the new collective bargaining agreement from the nba he would even be eligible to win said award but hey it is what it is this is what it was this year Maybe that will motivate it. I'm sure uh, Anthony Davis would much rather have a ring this year than a deep uh, defensive player of the year award. So at the end of the day, um, you know, we're going to see tonight. It's going to be a series that's going to unfold. Uh, it's a very important game. If Memphis could come out and win the game, uh, it'll be crucial to the series because if they go down 2-0 going out to the Lakers, it's pretty much a wrap. Me, myself, personally, Considering the pain level that John Morant was in, I noted on yesterday's show that I felt that it was probably in the better interest of the Memphis Grizzlies to keep him out and allow his hand to continue to heal. We know there was some soft tissue bruising, which doesn't bode well. So if you don't have 100% or at least 85 to 90% use of your hand without being in constant pain, then I don't think it's smart to put him out there because he could get injured more. And if you let him sit out now, the game is on Sunday. It's Wednesday now. They don't play again until Saturday. That would be a full week to kind of heal. And then maybe they can come out and make some noise on uh, Saturday. And we all know that, you know, Memphis Grizzlies have played well without John Moran in the past. But this is without John Moran and without Stephen Adams. So that's a big difference. And I've said going into the series that Stephen Adams, the – if if they had Steven Adams, I may would have picked Lakers in seven. Uh, and it could have went either way. But going into the series, knowing that they had no Steven Adams, knowing that they had no Brandon Clark, uh, I really knew that the Lakers would take advantage of this mismatch. I know that Hodger Moore had a great game the other day, hitting, what, five out of six threes. And, of course, uh, 
Desmond Bain said we'll see if he'll do that again. And maybe it's not likely that he'll do that again. As long as he can go out there and play good defense and get you 10 to 12 points, that's still good because I have the feeling that LeBron James and Anthony Davis are going to have more of a breakout game today. Uh, I don't really see Anthony Davis finishing the game with 21 or 23 points. I'm looking for him to get upward towards 30 and make up for any of those other points that Austin Murray might not give to you. And Austin Reeves, he is streaky at times. I know he was very hyped at the end of the last game and was very played a contributing factor to the victory, of course, hitting, what, seven, uh, seven points in a row down the stretch and was ultimately the clutch player of the game if you really look at it. But I think, you know, it just depends on how he picks his spots tonight. But one thing that's good to know is he's not shy and he is not afraid to take shots in the big moment. Uh, I'm looking for Troy Brown to actually have a bounce back game as well. He played pretty good defense while he was out there, but uh, he had a lot of open threes. Some that was wide open where it was even uncontested. Nobody even ran out and he didn't make any three pointers that I can recall. I don't, I think he missed all of them. I think he had four or five attempts. So I expect Troy Brown to have a bounce back game tonight uh, and make up for what he did on the other night. And of course, let's not forget Dennis Schroeder, uh, his great, on-ball defense, I think, could play big uh, when he's on Tyus Jones, especially if there is no John Morant. I think they have the Lakers as a minus one favorite tonight. I would say put everything you – I won't say everything you got. I never want to do that. But I would be comfortable in betting on the Lakers tonight only because of no John Morant. You know the crowd is going to be very much into it. But I think the Lakers, who have the tendency – to take their foot off the gas at times just because they might be up and they think it's not a must-win game. I think they know that they need to take care of business and not give this Memphis team any life at all. So they go into the game and take it serious from start to finish. Even with John Morant, we saw the other day that they were leading most of that game until the Anthony Davis semi-injury where he went out. Memphis went on that run, taking the lead in the second quarter, and we ultimately know what happened once Anthony Davis returned in the second half. So barring any injuries or anything like that to LeBron James or Anthony Davis, uh, I expect the Lakers to win this comfortably, actually. And I really think that LeBron James is going to have more of a breakout night. You got to give credit to Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks was really keeping LeBron away from his spots. I don't recall LeBron James really taking any fadeaways uh, that game, though. So, you know, that's his patented move. I know they did a whole lot of hard doubling to get the ball out of his hands. And, of course, we know LeBron James always makes the right plays. We'll see if Tyus Jones uh, is going to be the starting point. If that's the case, we're going to see him get mismatched against Austin Reeves a lot because we know Austin Reeves had his way with him down the stretch, and they were doing that with hard screens, getting uh, Tyus Jones switched off of uh, D'Angelo Russell and on to Austin Reeves. And Austin Reeves is masterful at getting his defenders stuck behind him as he navigates his way through the lane and through the screen. So we shall see what the Los Angeles Lakers do tonight. But hey, I do want to thank everybody for getting me over those 5,000 subscribers and only growing from now. So if you haven't done so already, keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting. Look forward to a live stream tonight after the game. So tune in. We can all discuss hopefully a Lakers victory. And if not, we'll talk about what the Lakers need to do to make corrections going into game three, going into LA. So if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post. And as always, wishing all y'all plenty of love and want to say right on to the real and much love to these haters. I'm out.